Not only that, but I don't even need my own study with this program, and I'm going to show you how we do this. So, under query term, we're going to go get our own data. So again, do that diffuse, large mammal, no, B cell. Lar diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Click on that phenotype. What this does is it has in those 20,000 data sets, it knows there are phenotypes associated with this. Here are the correlated genetic markers. They'll even give you the markers beforehand. But, you know, I like to do things the hard way, so I'm going to go to curated studies. I want to see what's there. You want to move your screen? Oh, Sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we've got 58 studies. That's quite a bit, right? What was the actual comparison? I'm sure a lot of this isn't relevant to what we did. What did we look at? What was our comparison? ABC versus right, activated versus the germinal, right? Let's start filtering this data set. So go filter by organisms. Go to Homo sapiens. On your next column, go to data types. Okay, I only want to look at RNA expression. Ours was looking at RNA expression. I only want to see those things that measure the same thing. Okay, now go to keyword. Here, let's put in activated. See if we can't find some gene lists with that term. Activated. And do not click on what you'll see is this activated peg. You don't want that. Just leave the activated and then hit apply filter. Did everybody get seven studies? Okay. First one, it kind of brought it up because it has this activated, you know, I read it. This, this doesn't, isn't really relevant to what we're doing. Go to the second one. Here's their comparison they did. Diffuse large B cell lymphoma activated versus germinal center B cell like. Is that the same thing we did? Totally. And they got 3,127 genes that were different. I think that's relevant. I want to keep this as a potential to compare to my list or just to generate my own idea of what's different between these two. So here where you see this kind of funnel looking thing, this green thing, add to meta-analysis, click on it. I now own that list. The millions of dollars that went into that research to produce that study, now I have their results. Everybody gets why that's cool, right? Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> Didn't bring my crayons or, you know, draw it out for you, but yeah, it's really cool. Does, so, does this only have data which is in the public domain, right? <laughs> no, it also has some other, you know, obviously Illumina works with a lot of, like, companies and stuff, so it does actually have some pri prioritary uh, data sets. Proprietary. Proprietary, yes. <laughs> And I don't even have, you know, I'm not even from another country. I can't even blame my accent. Okay. <laughs> You're lucky, Zoo. Wow. Yeah, I go back to sleep. That's my priority. <laughs> okay, go down here, second study. Again, you're clicking this, kind of these blue arrow things. <clears throat> Diffuse B cell activated. Germinal, yes. Keep going down. What I want you to do is get all of those that are, look at the same thing we did. Here in the first one, large B cell, click it, yes. Keep going, um, first one here. Ooh, there's a lot of stuff there. I think just get one per, uh, per study. Diffuse, there's only one there. And in your last study, it's gonna be your, la your third list down. B cell lymphoma activated versus germinal. Which one's that? What's that? That's the last one. Oh. Yeah. It's the third one down, but it's the last study. So when you're done, if you go up to the top, your meta analysis should say have a number six on it. Everybody got that? I only have five. It's okay. <laughs> you fail. All right, you're done. 
Again, you can do this any way you want. You can make these lists as big as you want. So believe it or not, I teach this. You're doing the same thing my high school kids did. I've taught this to high school kids, okay? We did breast cancer. So I was teaching class and I, I, I basically told my high school kids like, what do you want to study? We can look at any disease we want because all this data is out in the public domain. One of the kids said, well, my aunt died of breast cancer two weeks before that, that time. So I go, well, let's look at breast cancer. So we actually went out and I used this software. What we noticed is that at stage three breast cancer, you have a dramatic decline in, the, in your, or increase in your mortality rate, right? So we thought, so we took stage three versus either stage two or stage one. And we had a list of like 24 different studies it was the best cancer list I've ever seen. And these kids, like, they came up with their own list, that, and some were even better. Don't be scared with this stuff. It is not scary. And you might think that you're, like, breaking rules. Don't worry about it. There is no rules, right? At the very end, if you come up with a target and it works, you did it correctly. No rules. Everybody's like, ah. <laughs> Okay, go to meta-analysis. Let's see what we came up with. So this here is giving you all the studies, the gene list that we used. I can remove these. I can add them at any point. It works on the fly. That's what makes it really nice. Click on gene results. The next tab over. So you got setup and then gene results. Here are all the genes in those six studies. If it's red, if there's a red bar, that means it was differentially expressed. It was overexpressed in that study. You know, I've never worked on, you know, B cell lymphoma, but I'm going to bet that this gene's probably important if it's upregulated in six out of six studies that look at activated versus germinal, right? And I can just go down here and do the same thing. Which ones do you think are tumor suppressors? Yeah, the green ones, right? The red ones are the bad guys. Here's CD44. We're going to see this one again. These are the rock stars of cancer. I work on cancer a lot, lots of different kinds. These things pop up. Here's what I would do is if I didn't have my own data, I would do this study. If you look up here, you can export this as an Excel file. I would export this gene list and then I would say, I only want to look at those genes that say were differentially expressed in say three out of the six or two out of six. You can make it whatever you want. What you want is a list of genes and once I have that, I can find the median fold change and median p-value and then what you're going to see is we can take that into IPA. We can mine it here as well. So go to bio group results. These are the kind of biological conditions that are overrepresented in that list that we just created out of six different studies. Extracellular matrix. Basically, this process is decreasing. As these cancers get more severe, they go metastatic and they lose those adhesions to their uh, partners. Inflammatory response, STAT3 is up. You can find binding sites for particular microRNAs, even though we don't measure them, right? <laughs> this is cool. Here's why it's so powerful. Go back to your gene results. Who here has heard of Nate Silver? Okay, one person, two people, three. Very nice. It's always... It's always nice when statisticians get well-known because <laughs> that don't happen very much. A famous statistician, that's like an oxymoron or something. Um, so Nate Silver, he's a statistician, and the reason why he's famous, he also runs the website 538, if anybody has heard that. Why he is so famous is in 2012, he predicted basically every major election in this country, Okay. He didn't do any polls himself, none. He didn't measure anything himself. What he did is he took all the polls that were out there. Some were obviously biased left, some were obviously biased right. He took the average of all those polls and got pretty much the exact answer. 
we are doing the same thing. Picture these red bars as your poles, right? If, if six poles are picking this thing as a winner, it's probably important. We are crowdsourcing genetics, people. Isn't that cool? Sue, can I get a whoa? Whoa. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right, let's go. Now let's go see our data. So go to my data.